Welcome to Flag Down Day 5. We made it. We did indeed. Anybody else care to shout from the floor? <laughs> Excellent, because I can't deal with harassment and barracking like that. Uh, I began the entire conference off by thanking everybody, and I quickly want to go over that again. I really want to thank everybody absolutely sincerely, because this, this began as a small idea and grew and grew and grew. It wouldn't have happened without the help of, of the Clearwater and Arms. It wouldn't have happened without the help of, of uh, Minreg. It wouldn't have happened without all the help we've, we've, we've got from, from day one and the way everyone's come together and made this happen, I am absolutely humbled. Thank you. The speakers get a special thank you because without them, nobody would have came. Um, um, and of course, I do want to thank people all over the world that threw in a few dollars or a dollar here and there to get this thing going, because it has cost money to, pro to provide all this professional yes, yes. stuff you see around here, you know? Um, the name Amateur Hour Productions has been taken out of the, uh, the, uh, the, the, the letter head now. It's gone. We're a little more professional now, so let's hope it stays that way for the rest of the evening. So anyway, um, I thank everybody absolutely sincerely from the bottom of my heart, and I appreciate everything that everyone has done. It's got us here today. We have a very, very important job to do. We all know what that is. Um, and I really am not going to waste any more time talking to you. I'd like to introduce up here straight away our first speaker of the evening, and that's going to be Mark Bunker, also known as Wise Beard Man. And John Tim. <laughs> well, this is a surprise. <laughs> I mean, a few days ago, I never thought I'd be speaking here at Flagtown. So thank you to the organizers, everybody, for inviting me in and uh, allowing me to be a part of this. Um, I, I know there's been a little concern about the injunction out there. We've got a process server outside. I've been living under this injunction since uh, 2000. The injunction essentially says, you can't pick it here. You can pick it here. But not here. And uh, you know, when you're standing there, the, people, the cars will still go by and they'll honk and they'll support you. And David Miscavige will still be cowering in fear and keeping all the Scientologists hidden away in the buildings. And the, the other thing the injunction says is don't take a swing at a Scientologist, which uh, I, I think are words to live by. So um, I hope it doesn't uh, get used against any of you. It shouldn't. Um, the most important thing is, you know, we need to continue to speak out and be brave. We've got, you know, all you guys are, are absolutely terrific. Uh, it's, the, it's great to be in the presence of so many people that that are uh, old friends, like Bob Peterson, and, you know, Arnie Lerma, uh, you know, and, and the, they have the great John Sweeney here. This is very exciting. Um, I, I have... Um, a film that I've been working on and somebody wanted to, they, they wanted me to talk a little bit about that. As I was leaving this uh, event yesterday, I drove past the uh, Fort Harrison Hotel in the Superpower Building, and I saw how they had torn up the sidewalks and brought in all the heavy equipment. It is amazing <laughs> the lengths that Scientology will go to to try to prevent your message from getting across. Uh, I have a, a, a montage in the film uh, that shows the incredible things that Scientology has done in the past. First time I came here back in 1999 for the Lisa McPherson vigil and, and, and picket, um, they had actually torn up with a jackhammer every single sidewalk around the entire Fort Harrison Hotel. Wow. No, they didn't care at all, at all about the expense. The important <laughs> thing was, don't let them near the property. And that had, but the most despicable thing they did that year is on Cleveland Avenue in front of the bank building. They couldn't tear up those sidewalks. So they had these young children who were positioned on the street. They had one table set up on every block. And during the entire day, they'd have one little, little uh, six to 10 year old uh, child sitting there supposedly sharing art projects with the citizens of Clearwater. 
Now you know this, the, the streets down there, they're empty. So these poor kids were, were forced to sit out there with their little paper and glue and sparkles. And, and uh, they were just being used as human shields because they were hoping if, if people were to protest down there, it would look like the, the big bad critics were, were just taking on, the, they, were, they were protesting little kids. So I mean, it's, it's just obscene the lengths they will go to and the, the lack of care they have for you know, the, the members, which is what we're, really, um, what we're really here for. When I started this, uh, this movie knowledge report, I was in San Diego. And those of you who have made a, a donation uh, toward the film, uh, I know some of you are in the room here, and there's plenty of other people that are out there watching this. I deeply appreciate that. I recently sent out uh, your SP declares <laughs> and a knowledge report of your uh, helping on this nefarious activity. In the letter I sent out with that, I, I talked about the fact in, in, in San Diego, there are other wacky religions there. I mean, we, we've got the uh, Lumurians who believe that uh, all life sprang from the lost city of Atlantis. There's a, there's a creationism museum for people who think that Jesus palled around with dinosaurs. And my favorite are the Unarius uh, folks. The, they have a storefront there. Now, they believe things that aren't that terribly dissimilar from, from Scientology. They, uh, they believe in reincarnation, and they believe that they're telepathically communicating with the Space Brothers on all these various planets throughout the galaxy, as L. Ron Hubbard would say. And I went to spend a couple of days with them. Every summer, they have uh, a, a summer solstice. And I went and shot this. They, they, they have a little pageant where the members will come out on stage in Balboa Park. And each of them are wearing the outfit that uh, represents the, 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 the garb on these various planets. And in this ceremony, they're welcoming the Space Brothers to come down and share the wisdom of the cosmos. And at the end, they, they open up this UFO and doves fly out. And <laughs> it, it really is touching. Um, <laughs> and I went to, uh, to their headquarters the next day, and I interviewed a bunch of people. And they have one room that's, that's just filled with murals. Uh, really kitschy paintings of uh, some scenic vista. And I talked to one guy on camera who told me how proud he was and how excited he was because he got to help paint this with Michelangelo, who had been reincarnated. And unfortunately, uh, Michelangelo died again a couple of years before I got there. So I'll have to pick him up next time. But, um, but <coughs> if I had a chance to interview Michelangelo, I think I'd probably say, what happened to your talent? I mean, <laughs> I mean, but, but they sincerely believe this. And this guy who believed he was working with Michelangelo was the nicest guy you can possibly meet. And the point I'm bringing this all up is, is nobody is outside their headquarters protesting because they don't hurt anybody. Right. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. You know, and that's what the film is really about. And that's why we're all here. Um, I know people, the most uh, frequent question that I get is, when is your film going to be done? <laughs> and uh, I, I, I know I'm, I'm taking a long time. I, I feel like, you know, George R. R. Martin, whose fans are going, when are you going to write the next damn book? I can't wait for another Game of Thrones. Uh, it, it, is, it is, I'm here hunkered down to work on this. There, there's a little more to go. Everybody asks me, what will the date be? And uh, I, I haven't had a date, really, but I do have now uh, a target to shoot for. I think it'd be nice to, to have it ready for Flight Down 2015. Yeah. <laughs> uh, thank you again for inviting me here. I, I want to turn this back to uh, you folks. And uh, <coughs> thank you so much. Appreciate it. Thanks, Bob. Thanks,